You are listening to the Keep the Weight Off podcast with Dr. Angela and Marcel, episode number 148. Welcome to the Keep the Weight Off podcast, where we bust all the dieting myths and discover not just how to lose weight, but more importantly, how to keep it off. We go way beyond the food and we use science and psychology to give you strategies that work. And now your host, Dr. Angela Zekman. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the podcast this week. Well, the holidays are over, and we're into a new year. Happy 2024, Marcel. Oh, (laughs) thank you. you. Good. (laughs) Happy New Year to you, too. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Marcel was in the clinic today, and, um, like, apparently, it is crazy. (laughs) Yeah, for I, first day back, you know, after the, the back long the weekend. And yeah. yeah. So um, everybody wants to get going on their weight loss journeys now that it's the new year. And I think that's great because I, like I talked about last week, like think about who you're going to be December 31st, 2024. Like it could be a whole new you, right? So you know what I do though, when the new year hits, here's what I do. I spend at least six weeks writing the previous year's date down. (laughs) Do you you ever do that? No, you know what's so weird is I, for some reason, 2024, I got it down. Like 2023, I messed up a lot. Yeah, I don't know what it is about 2024. It's easy for me to remember. Wow. Okay. I'm impressed. So, yeah. So, you know, we were writing it all day today and I didn't have any Mm -hmm. problems. So that was, that was one of the things that I did right today. (laughs) Yay. (laughs) Struggled with everything else, but I I got the, I got the year down right. (laughs) right. I'm sure when you say you're struggling, you're doing just fine. Oh, well, thank you. (laughs) You're welcome. All right. Well, before I say anything else, I just want to mention that if you, the listener to this podcast, is considering joining us in Empowered Weight Loss, this is the time, okay? This is a really good time because right now the price is super affordable and we're just starting with our Emotional Mastery Month. We just are starting Emotional Mastery. So if you know that you're an emotional eater, I'm teaching all the tools that you're going to need to help you overcome this tendency. And I'm going to teach you a little bit today even, okay? But if you want to know really specifically how to manage emotional eating, get into Empowered Weight Loss right now and join us, okay? It is really, really affordable. Just go to journeybeyondweightloss.com forward slash yes and get in there. Okay, so here is an interesting question. How many of us are not emotional eaters to some extent or another? I mean, think about it. Like, we eat when we're bored. I can't even think of one person that I know. I know. We eat when we've got something to do that we don't want to do. Do you know what that's called? Boredom? Procrastinating. Oh, procrastinating. Okay. (laughs) Not procrastinating. (laughs) Procrastinating. Oh, that's a good one. (laughs) We eat when we're anxious, we eat when we're sad, we eat when we're angry. Sometimes my daughter will call me up or send me a text message. She goes, I angry ate last night. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've done discouraged. that. Oh, my gosh. So any kind of negative emotion that we don't want to feel, we have this tendency to want to stop it by eating. We all do it, right? Yeah, my, my, my huge challenge is boredom. That's yeah. when I want a snack, yeah, to keep myself busy you know, if my hand's busy or, you know, yeah. keep my mind off of what I'm doing, I yeah, uh-huh. snack yeah. a lot. Yeah. Well, we eat for positive reasons too. Like we eat to celebrate or to connect with other people or oh, yeah. we, eat for, we eat for just pure entertainment sometimes, or we cook or we bake to show love. And this is all like really deeply ingrained in us and supported by all kinds of cultural and social traditions, right? So, oh yeah, I can think of like 10 right off the top of my head that or my that my family um celebrate eats. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, and of course the food industry loves this. They have ads that work really hard to show us in their marketing that food is more than just nourishment and fuel for our bodies. It's a way to show love. It's a way to entertain ourselves. It's a way to reward ourselves. It's a way to soothe ourselves. So 
Um, this is just a little bit about what we're up against when we think about trying to address emotional eating. So I just want to presence that. <laughs> oh my gosh, that just made me think of something. So I went into Walmart the other day, right before Christmas, all right? Mm -hmm. And I had to go get some milk or something. And I went into Walmart and they literally have like five aisles of candy. Okay. All different kinds of candy. Yeah. It's insane. It, it was like, didn't even seem real. Okay. Yeah. But right before Christmas, Christmas hadn't even happened yet. And two of the aisles, what they had put all their Valentine's Day candy. It's like Christmas hadn't even happened yet. So they had like these two aisles now oh my of the gosh. Valentine's Day candy and three aisles. Of, it was insane. Like out of all the food in the entire store, the most product they had was the, these five aisles of candy. It was so crazy. Oh and it just made me so mad. And um, yeah. yeah, and it was, I mean, it was hard to like walk past without, you know, it catching your eye because they make yeah. it look so shiny and beautiful. And so yeah. it just, yeah, it just really just, made me just angry at the food industry for that. Yeah. Well, and think about it. Like if you buy Valentine's candy before it's even Christmas, yeah. if you're going to eat that, you're not going to give that to anybody. You're going to eat you it think? yourself. Of course. Of <laughs> course. So we've got a big mess that we have to deal with when we want to address emotional eating. So I just really want us all to understand that. So one of the first and most important things that we can do is to just work at developing awareness around it. Like, don't try to stop it right away. Just develop an awareness. So, for example, just for the rest of today, whatever time of day it is that you're listening to this podcast, assuming there's a few hours left in the day and it's not the end of the day, just start noticing, when am I getting urges to eat that are actually not a need to nourish or fuel my body? Like, what types of social cues am I getting? If I'm working in an office setting, are my coworkers offering me food or opportunities to eat? If I'm working at home, are there times where I'm just getting up from my desk and heading to the fridge or the pantry for a snack, even though I'm not really hungry, like procrastinating? <laughs> or maybe I'm watching TV. Am I being tempted to eat with food commercials? Or when I'm reading a magazine, or scrolling on social media, are there pictures of food that my brain has to deal with, right? Yeah. Now, I will say that in our Sugar and Flower Buster Society on Facebook, I was thinking about, well, we have social media. We have Sugar and Flower Buster Society. Marshall posts amazing recipes. But remember, this is not an invitation for emotional eating. <laughs> this is an invitation to plan nutritious meals and snacks to nourish your body correctly and deliciously, right? Yes, this is true. Yeah. So as you're thinking about this new awareness of emotional eating, think also about emotional drinking. So your body doesn't really need anything other than water to drink. So if you're drinking coffee drinks or sodas or alcoholic beverages, this is also a form of emotional eating. Oh, man, that kind of blows my mind. I don't really think about it like that. Yeah. Like any anything besides water is yeah. not is not something that we would normally you don't need <laughs> normally it. need yeah yeah wow wow I mean you could say black coffee or green tea like has some nutritious value in it but most of the stuff that we drink is not those things <laughs> yeah. most of the stuff that we drink is sugary coffee beverages and sodas mm -hmm. and alcoholic stuff so. Yeah, I mean, so, I I was a person like I used to think that juice was super healthy to give my kids. Like, mm. I you know raised my kid on juices, and I yeah. had ju I, like I thought juice was really really healthy, and yeah. until until I met you, yeah, <laughs> and then and then you know just becoming more aware of everything around. But um, yeah. but yeah, so I mean, I was one of those people that that thought yeah. that. Yeah, so juice is definitely not health healthy. Now you could you could argue that milk is healthy. You could say. Yeah, but even that, I mean, like that, you can argue, argue that the other way as well. I mean, I've heard, you know, I've heard how bad it is for you, the dairy products. So, well, it, yeah, it, that's a whole different subject. But yeah, it's a whole different subject. The, exactly. The point is that many of us are drinking our emotions and not necessarily eating them. So it could be eating or drinking. Okay. That's my yeah. point. Now, am I saying that any of this is wrong or bad? No. Not unless it's making the disease of obesity difficult to control or keeping you stuck in a boring life 
or preventing you from evolving, right? So that's the question that you want to be asking yourself. If you're starting the new year with dreams about a transformation this year, and you're beginning to recognize that you have patterns of emotional eating and drinking that are preventing you from being successful, this is where you might benefit from addressing this, okay? So the first step in developing awareness of your emotional eating and drinking patterns is to recognize the triggers that lead to these behaviors. So take some time to reflect on your eating and drinking habits. When do you find yourself reaching for food or a drink? Is it when you're stressed or tired or bored? So identifying the triggers can help you understand the underlying emotions that drive these habits. So one effective way to develop your awareness is by keeping a food and drink journal and include your emotions in your journal. So for a week, just write down everything that you eat and drink along with the emotions you're experiencing when you consume them. Now, this is not, this is just data collection, okay? So there's nothing threatening about this. Just make a note in your cell phone or carry around a piece of paper or a little notebook or something. And just write down everything that you eat and drink along with the emotions that you're experiencing. So this journal is going to provide you really valuable insights into what your patterns are. So you might notice certain trends or associations that you were unaware of before, you know, like maybe that time right after work or that time after dinner or the mornings. So think about that. I'm already feeling anxiety about doing this. Ah, why? <laughs> um, I don't know. I just feel like it's, you know, once you write that stuff down, it sort of tells all. So, um, well, it's only yeah. for you. So I know. You're I know. Only telling I know. Yourself. I know. You're only know. telling yourself the truth. Um, yeah. And it's not something that you want to judge yourself about. Maybe that's what's going on in your head. That's like, what. Oh that God, is I'm exactly. Judge I, mean, I was just. Gonna, and I was just going to say, don't be judgmental, guys. Just right here. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm back in my head. I'm, I'm. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm going to do this. So yeah, right. Yeah. So so you're gonna don't use it as an opportunity to judge yourself. Do, use it as an opportunity to get really really curious. Like, what do I do with foods and beverages? What kinds of things am I eating and drinking that are just purely for pleasure or for relieving a negative emotion or what is it, right? So no judgment necessary, just curiosity and figure out what your patterns are like, right? And again, none of this is wrong or bad. This is just you trying to figure out what do I do? And later on, you can ask yourself, well, are there any negative consequences to this? But you just want to be super, super curious. You don't have to do anything about it right now. Just figure out what your patterns are. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Are you ready for the next step? Yeah. Okay. So remember how I always say the journey to lasting weight loss is a journey of profound personal evolution. (laughs) I think I've heard you say that once or twice. You've heard me say that a few times. So (laughs) Your next step is to take just one of these episodes of emotional eating or drinking. And before you eat or drink anything, just sit down with a piece of paper or a blank document on your computer or a little note on your cell phone and ask yourself, what emotion am I feeling? Remember, your primitive brain is seeking pleasure and relief from pain. So you're going to be asking yourself to do something that your brain does not want to do. And so you're likely going to have some strong resistance against actually sitting down and asking yourself what's going on here. So just expect that. I'm just warning you ahead of time. Your brain is likely to say, hell no, we're not going to identify this emotion because in order to actually identify it, we have to feel it. And that could be painful. Yeah, exactly. Maybe that's where the anxiety is coming from. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. (laughs) So just remind yourself that sometimes the only way out is through. And also remind yourself that if you want lasting weight loss, this is important. So you sit down and you start writing. What am I thinking? What am I feeling? And you know, the interesting thing is that this kind of self-support is really profound. Because for once, you're not shutting yourself down with food 
or a sugary beverage or an alcoholic beverage. You're actually paying attention to yourself. You're finding out what's going on in your inner world. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So once you figure out what you're thinking and feeling, so you'll sit there and you'll do some writing and you're paying attention to yourself and thoughts and emotions are coming to the surface. And once you figure out what you're thinking and feeling, the next step is to honor yourself. So you want to honor yourself for two reasons. The first reason is because you actually took the time to figure out what your true feelings and thoughts are, and you didn't shut yourself down. And the second reason that you want to uh, honor yourself is because you're a human being with valid thoughts and valid feelings that deserve to be known and expressed. Most of us were not taught this when we were young. We were told to be quiet to not make waves, to not make trouble for other people. Oftentimes, we were shut down with offers of food or a beverage treat of some sort. Right. Right. Yeah, this is true. Yeah. I remember one woman told us the story of coming home from school after another kid had bullied her for her weight, and her mother handed her a package of chocolate kisses. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Like Hershey's kisses. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, the thing is, I could see myself, you know, doing that before I was more aware like yeah. I, you know, I've, I've done that. My mom does that with me. And yeah. so, I mean, it's, it's really easy to do. Well, how many times do, I mean, I remember over and over again, taking my kids to the grocery store and they'd be sitting in the seat in the cart, getting a little squirmy. And so we'd go over to the bakery and get them a cookie. Yeah. Like, yes. Yeah. I used to do that too. Yeah. One, one for me, one for the kiddos. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, that's, I, yeah, I remember doing all, yeah, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. All that stuff. So we're, we were sort of trained from the get-go to not pay attention to what our emotions are and to use food to distract ourselves. So this idea of actually honoring what our emotions are is huge. And it's a starting point for us as we learn to manage emotional eating. So just take a week and begin to notice the times of day And what are your patterns of eating and drinking? And do some journaling to figure out what your patterns are. You don't have to fix it, okay? As a matter of fact, you can't fix it if you don't really know what's happening, okay? So once you have a good idea of what your patterns are, just take one episode and sit down with a blank piece of paper and do some investigating. Find out what's going on under the surface. Really listen to yourself. And then once you've done that, validate your feelings. You're a human being and you have a right to feel whatever you're feeling and congratulate yourself for taking the time to actually listen. So this is the beginning. There are more steps to this and I want to say it's a constant work in progress. You're going to need support and coaching if you really want to address this so you can keep the weight off for good. And that's why I developed the Empowered Weight Loss Membership. Again, it's a good time to get started because we're just starting our Emotional Mastery Month and the membership dues are very affordable. So I hope we'll see you inside the membership. Yeah. So this is the time to sign up. Yeah. So, Marshall, did you have anything else you wanted to add? No, I was, nope, I've just, the the wheels are starting to spin. I've just started thinking Your about some of my behaviors. <laughs> yeah, I started thinking about some of my behaviors. So I'm kind of, I'm coming over here just, um, just thinking of things. Just thinking, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like, what's it going to be like when I actually sit down with a piece yeah. of paper? Yep. Yeah. Figure out what I'm feeling. Like, why do I bored me? Yeah. That's a yeah, good question. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's where I'm going my, with that. <laughs> my time is like at three o'clock every afternoon. Yeah. Yep. It's like, okay. So. All right. So figure out what's going on for you. Just become aware. That's all I'm asking you to do for this week. Come aware. And as you become more and more aware, really treat yourself kindly and graciously and honor yourself, honor your feelings. Okay. So all right, everyone, that is all for this week. If you found this episode helpful, please subscribe to the podcast, leave a review, Share it with others who might benefit from this information. Um, An easy way to do that is to just take a screenshot of this episode and then share it with a link on all your social media platforms. And that will really help spread the word. And thanks in advance for doing that. Okay, everyone, here's looking forward to a great 2024. Take care and we'll see you next time.
Bye. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Hey, if you really want to lose weight and keep it off for good, your next step is to sign up for Dr. Angela's free weight loss course, where you're going to learn everything you need to get started on your weight loss journey the right way. Just head over to journeybeyondweightloss.com slash free course to sign up. Also, it would be awesome if you could take a few moments and write a review on iTunes. Thanks, and we'll see you in Journey Beyond Weight Loss.